So what is going on guys and welcome back to episode number 78 of our Portsmouth career mode and we have got a Champions League group stage game up against Wolfsburg in this episode and it is going to be in fact a, uh, at home at Fratton Park but as you can see in your bottom right screen we're currently sitting second in the group stage with seven points along with Juventus in seven points and we're going to be playing Wolfsburg so we should pick up all three points here and we're going to be fighting Juventus as the next game is actually going to be against Juventus. Juventus. So I think whoever wins that match is going to finish top of the group stage. But we are going to be playing with our second team lineup in this one as we've made many changes due to fitness issues. As I didn't realise that when you're in the Champions League, you have so many games in short succession and we cannot deal with it. So we have to be playing our second team lineup in a big game like this. But I've got faith in them and hopefully we can try and get something from the game. Good ball around the corner to Ryan Gold here. Ryan Gold's been played through. We get an early chance here. And Gold is going to finesse the ball into the back of the net. Past Benaglio. And Benaglio won't ha be happy with his defenders in front of him there. Just six minutes into the game. We give our home crowd something to cheer about. Lovely build-up play for us here. A lovely ball around the corner from Leon Bailey. Ryan Gold's got plenty of place in his locker. And that's a really neat finish. Past Benaglio into the back of the net. And Ryan Gold has actually picked up his first goal so far. This Champions League group stage. However, Wolfsburg go ahead and score a goal which comes out of absolute nothing. They've done nothing throughout the whole game and closely their old striker has scored a goal for them and you can see how much it means because they've scored a goal on the counter-attack. We're completely dominating the game but somehow Closer wins a header above both of our uh, defenders there. Both centre-backs are in the middle, they're both really tall but Closer has a free header. We've, they've got to be questioned about that one. It's not the best defending of our And if we want to finish top of the group stage, we're going to have to try and find a goal from somewhere. Have a Wolfsburg another good chance for themselves. Surely we're not going to go ahead and lose this game, are we? We might do because they've hit the post. Now they have another good chance. This time Shiplock with the save and we get let off the hook. We were so close there to going 2-1 down, but we might have a chance on the counter-attack. Martinez, who is very quick across the ground, running past everyone here. He keeps on going. He squeezed the ball through to Bailey or tries to and his pass gets intercepted. But how close did we come there to find ourselves 2-1 down? Maybe a good chance here. Ryan Gold with the ball over the top. It's come to Martinez. Martinez, surely he had to find the back of the net. And he's still yet to score a goal for Portsmouth since we brought him in from Everton. A little bit disappointing this one, but we're going to take the short corner. Ryan Gold's going to take, I think it is Martinez on the edge of the box. Yes, it is. It's a good first touch. He strikes it. It comes off Dante and it goes out wide for yet another corner kick. However, Martinez on the ball. Martinez, oh, once again, losing out, but he gets a little bit of luck there. He plays the ball through to Leon Bailey. Surely Bailey's on side. He finishes the ball into the far corner of the net, but the linesman had his flag up, and Leon Bailey, with just the first chance he has all game, finds the back of the net, but the linesman rules it out as he must have been standing in offside position. But I can tell you now, it was very tight. And we go ahead and drop two points at home against Wolfsburg. So we completely dominated the game. Benaglio making a few good saves. A few misses we made that proved to be crucial. And as you see there, we had eight shots, six on target compared to Wolfsburg, two on target. Like I said, we completely dominated. We didn't really do much wrong apart from concede the goal. And it was just a goal on the counter-attack. Boscagli and Ongwen, not the best performances by them. But still, it wasn't diabolical. But our front men... All three played well. It was just a lack of goals, to be honest, that lost us the game. However, we are now going to move into the second game of the episode, which is going to be away from home against Hull City. So it's going to be a really difficult game. But then we've got our full team lineup back. We've got our front two strikers in inspired form at the moment. And especially when you've got the trio four up top, they're just unstoppable at times. So straight away, just two minutes into the game, I was saying about how good our strikers are in form. And Yannick Bocca, Drogba's regen, has just scored an absolute wonderful goal. And to me, it looked like he was never going to score from there. I decided to pull the trigger as we'd just taken the kickoff. Bergwin cuts inside. We gave it a little bit lucky. Mastor plays ball to Bocca. And what about that for a finish from outside the box? I don't think Jack Button would be that happy about conceding a goal from that distance. But... What a strike. A good chance for us to break here. Play the ball through to Kingsley Coman. It's not the best of balls, but Kingsley Coman's still going to catch up with it. And Kingsley Coman's missed, but the ball comes back to him and he saves his blushes there as we double our lead just 20 minutes into the game. Jack Butler with an absolute delightful save there, denying Kingsley Coman the first time round. But then the second time round, Kingsley Coman manages to turn, swivel on the sixpence and find the back of the net. A little bit disappointing that Kingsley Coman couldn't find the back of the net the first time, but it doesn't matter because he still picked up the goal. And that's his fourth goal. So between 
between him and Bokken, they've already got eight goals this season. However, Hull, what a save by Shiplock. I was about to say, however, Hull get a consolation goal for themselves. But Shiplock with an absolute delightful save. A lovely boy over the top to Bakali here, or from Bakali to uh, Boca. Boca out wide to Mastor. Mastor to try and play the ball through to Bakali, who actually initiated the start for us. He's going to cut back inside. A lovely goal this could be if we could find the back of the net. He tries to cut back inside, doing too much. But let's just go back there and have a look at that save from Shiplock. What a save. So as you can see here, they have some good play here. They whip the ball in the box and we just put a camera behind here as it's behind the player. The ball comes in. He has really good contact with it. But what about that for a save from Shiplock? That is incredible. That must be one of the best saves I've seen. One-handed. What a... F oh my God, I can't believe it. That was just amazing. And Yannick Bocker has done it again. He has scored another wonderful goal from outside the box. So we've gone from nearly conceding and Hull getting themselves back into the game to us wrapping up the game here. We take the throw in. It comes to a Ruben Loftus treat. He plays the ball to Mastor, uh, Mastor to Boca, sorry. Boca actually facing the wrong way, turns, hits that first time. And Butland, there's nothing you can do about that one. It hits the crossbar as it goes in. And what a, another wonderful strike from Yannick Boca. But unfortunately, we couldn't, in fact, pick up our hatchet with Yannick Bocker, but it doesn't matter. He's still my man in the match. He picked up two amazing goals for us in that game and picks up a 9.3 rating as well. But there was three memorable moments about that one. Shiplock with a wonderful save and both Yannick Bocker's goals. However, Joe Gomez hits the next rating now. He's now increased to a 74 rating. Ryan God has actually taken two places in the training at the moment because Yannick Bocker is currently on international duty. So we are now going to move into the third and final game of the episode, which is going to be at Fratton Park up against West Ham. So we are currently going to play this game with our second team lineup because just in three days, we have a next uh, game in the Champions League group stage. But it is actually going to be up against Juventus. So if we go out and beat Juventus, we will go top of our group stage, which we definitely want to do because that means in the next stage of the Champions League, we will get given a, in theory, easier side. And West Ham have just scored an absolute wonderful goal. I'm not actually, I think it might have been Michel Antonio scoring it. The acrobatics from the corner. Let's see that the corner comes in. The ball gets cleared, but only as far as Antonio. He strikes it. Shiplock can't react in time. And that was a wonderful strike from Michel Antonio. Kishner with a really good chance. Kishner gets absolutely hacked down there by the West Ham right back. And the best possible time for us to go ahead and score is just before the half-time break. And he wouldn't be happy with that there. The 33, number 33 for them, Stephen Hendry, takes down Kishner. I don't know what he's complaining about because he can't really complain about this, can he? He gets absolutely nowhere near the ball, hacks Kishner's ankles, and he goes down. It's going to be now Bailey up against Randolph. He's going to go to the top right-hand corner. Surely we're going to find the back of the knee. Yet. Yes, we are. And in front of our home crowd, we go ahead and score the goal to get us back on level terms. A little disappointed that we conceded the goal, but it doesn't really matter because we're now back on level terms. And now, hopefully, we can come out in the second half, put in a good performance and pick up all three points. However, it's one very last chance here. Bocco has just come on the pitch. We want to, we brought him on to see if he could pick up a goal for us. He cuts inside and surely the referee's going to let us take the throw. And we had a throw in the dangerous position and the referee blows the final whistle. But we end up drawing the game and it proved to be costly that Michel Antonio is wonderful goal in the first half. But disappointing from us, to be honest. I thought we should be picking up three points there, especially at home. We just beat a hole quite comfortably. And now we can only draw against West Ham. And considering how well we're doing in the Champions League, in our own league, we're not actually doing that well. Because if you're going to have a look at the league table, as I'll show you now... We're not doing that well. So as you can see here, we're still currently 7th and we're 9 points off the lead. So we're 7th and a little bit disappointing. I thought we'd at least be in the Champions League spots at the moment. But before we end up this episode, we are going to go ahead and do some player training. We're going to leave Ryan Gold on for the minute because I actually want him to try and increase to the 78. And as soon as he increases, we're going to go ahead and reinstate Boca into the training. But that is in fact going to be it for this episode. If you did enjoy it, please make sure to hit the like button down below as it is going to be very much appreciated. And I really hope for next time very, very soon for the next episode of whatever that career mode might be. Thank you. Bye-bye.